Joining us now, Democratic Congressman Jared Moskowitz of Florida. It is good to have you on the program once again. A congressman, as a man of Jewish faith, you have been also living this personally. So I wonder how Senator Schumer's words resonate with you today. Well, thank you, Chris, and thank you for talking about this. It's important that we talk about it. Uh, Senator Schumer, I'm thankful that he did that speech. That is the conversation that went on at every Jewish dinner table over Thanksgiving in America this last week. It is the conversation that's going on in every synagogue. It is the conversation that's going on with parents and their children. It's the conversation that's going on with parents and their kids on college campuses. Uh, the Jewish community is extremely worried about where the conversation and the rhetoric are going. And here's why. We see these, obviously, protests in the streets that are on a foreign policy issue, like a ceasefire. And while we might have disagreements on whether there should be a ceasefire or not, in the crowds of those people, we see signs that say, gas the Jews, kill the Jews, cleanse the Jews. Well, that's not a foreign policy unless that's a foreign policy of Germany in the early 40s. We see these people clawing at these posters of these hostages. And, and we hear them saying, these people are not real. And as they're being filmed and their lives are probably going to be ruined as a result of their behavior. They're still clawing at these things, almost like a magnet drawn to it and can't stop without ripping these posters off the walls. And, and so these are the stories that my grandparents and other folks told us in the lead up to everything that happened in Europe, that Jews were looked at as subhuman. And, and so the Jewish community is experiencing uh, this right now, and too many of our friends and ally, allies are, are silent, they're quiet. Yeah, they might privately disagree with what's happening, but, but they're, not, they're not talking. And this is a bipartisan problem, right? When Donald Trump has dinner with a Holocaust denier, Republicans don't want to say anything. It's easy for Democrats to criticize because it's across the aisle. And when Democrats are silent on anti-Semitism, it's either easy for Republicans to criticize the squad, but Democrats don't want to say anything internally. And so it's much easier to call it out what's on the other side, but much harder to do it from when it's within your own party. And so, look, President Biden's done an excellent job attacking anti-Semitism, appointing an ambassador on anti-Semitism. These are excellent first steps, but no, the Jewish community is extremely worried about where this can go and what's happening on social media and the fact that people are falling for the psyops that China and Russia and the Jewish community and the, the United States enemies are running with these kids. These kids don't even know what they're saying. It's just hip to say it. It's hip to be anti-Semitic. And, and against the backdrop of what's happening in the country, there are genuine policy differences where you are on Capitol Hill. Right now, a foreign aid package, which would include money for Israel, of course, is in limbo. And there are lawmakers on the left, including Bernie Sanders, who want conditions on any aid sent to Israel. They're concerned about how that money will be used. So what is your position on this? So look, I think Senator Sanders is wrong, and I can prove that because early on, both the White House and Senator Schumer told all of the Democrats in the House to vote against Speaker Johnson's bill on Israel aid because it had conditions in it, right? We agreed that there should be no conditions. And by the way, Speaker Johnson is the one who played with important aid for Israel. He's the one who played a political game. Rather than uniting us on the House steps after the Hamas attack, Speaker Johnson to chose to divide us. And Israel still doesn't have that needed aid, our number one ally in the Middle East, because the Speaker decided to play those games. Uh, and so what I'm for is I'm for both. I'm for defeating Hamas and giving Israel the necessary tools to do that, and I'm for humanitarian aid for the people of Gaza, the innocent civilians of Gaza. There is no doubt that Hamas has not just taken Israelis hostage and people from around the world hostage uh, in the Gaza Strip, but they've taken the Palestinian people hostage by using them as human shields. Make no mistake about it, Hamas would like to see more Palestinians die so they could feed that propaganda to the rest of the world. And so I think we have to support Israel in their time of need, and we got to help the innocent people of Gaza in humanitarian aid. And we shouldn't start this conditioning thing. Otherwise, there'll be strings on the humanitarian aid to Gaza that will require none of that aid to move until Hamas it leaves. And this is going to create all sorts of problems for innocent civilians. We only have a minute left, but I do want to bring it back to Capitol Hill. How wide do you think the democratic divide is right now over Israel, aid to Israel? Uh, could those divisions complicate the efforts to get that aid package to the president's desk? 
So look, there are definitely divisions, but they're smaller than people think. You know, we've got to remember, there's 435 members here, there's 212 uh, Democrats uh, up here. And so, yeah, there's disagreements with a couple of dozen, but the overwhelming majority of Democrats are going to support aid to Israel without any conditions. Congressman Jared Moskowitz, we do appreciate you taking the time to be on the program. Thank you.